is going down. I am your host, Scotty ATL. We are live on Edgewood at Grills by Scotty. It's going to be a great day. I'm so happy to be here today, man. It's going to be a great... How y'all feeling? Okay. Make some noise for my DJ, DJ Samoa. What's up, DJ Samoa? Okay. Today, we got a very special guest in the building. I ain't going to lie. This nigga been everywhere doing everything. <laughs> This man has been uh, in the in the public eye, I think, since some of us have been knowing about music. Since we've been teenagers coming up, I've been doing that motorcycle dance, you know what I'm saying? He's also been someone that's been on radio, television, um, loving hip hop, Atlanta, movies, Streets 94.5. Now he's in the in politics, doing his thing in the politics world. He's a family man. He's a father. I want y'all to make some noise. Put your hands together today for my dog, Young Jock, man. What's up, man? I feel good. I feel good. How you feel? I feel great, man. It's I feel such... good. <laughs> <laughs> man, it's a pleasure to have you here, man. Like you, you're a real superstar to us, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you, you know, we get a lot of celebrities on the show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But to a lot of people in this building, even myself, man, you, you a really big public figure, man. Yeah, I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got to give you your props. I got to give you your props because, you know. A lot of times it's black men, you know, we, it's a lot of hating going on. And we can't really give a nigga what they deserve till they did and they gone. Yeah. So when you in the building, we got to let you know, bro, you you elevated past what a lot of us may ever be able to do. That's some extraordinary shit. What's up? Put your that. hands together. Please make some noise again. <laughs> okay. Jock, I want to know, man. <laughs> What's wrong? He's doing a great job. I'm doing a great job. He's doing a fabulous job. Thank you, man. Appreciate it, man. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> the, what, what put motorcycle dance, young job, on the map from the beginning? I'm not talking about that song, but what was it that made people put you in position to even get there? Was you buzzing in the streets? Was you just making noise as a D boy? What was what was going on in life that put you in position like that? I mean, honestly, it's kind of like I always understood what a network looked like. You know what I'm saying? When you when you looking around you, directly around you, you you know you really only as strong as your weakest link. So sometimes when I can pinpoint the weakest link, then I can also see the strongest link around me. And you work with and work on, work with the strongest link. You work on the weakest link. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And in any circle that I've ever been a part of, I've always tried to do that. And um, I think I think my 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 communication skills when it comes to putting a team together, I've been able to do that over and over and over again, so many times successfully. And I think that's what before the world even knew about me doing music. I think people could feel my synergy when I when I walk into a room and people know be like, man, hi, bro, I know everybody. Mm -hmm. But I, I I make sure I nurture I nurtured relationships. I let people know that I appreciated the relationships. And I think that's very important. A lot of people don't do that. Because once they feel like they make it another notch up or a step up, they kind of looking at people like they're beneath them. But that's a that's that's a part of your ecosystem. And you can never look at nobody as a lesser or a greater force. It's just we all ended the winning, you know what I mean? Thanks. So was was that like that was your biggest hit from you know before that you didn't have another big record you just came out with that one record from the gate yeah. and popped it off well well yeah no i was you rapping before that i was i was doing other things with other people and writing with other people as well okay so i was a part of other records that i've never been able to say i was a part of because oh. of how i had to sign the paperwork so I just really decided to just let you have that today on your on your situation. Cause wow. 
Wow. Somebody gonna ask me about it later, but I want to let it be known right here on your on your podcast. Wow, that's sure. major. Yeah. So I was already kind of like, that's why I was able to kind of work my mood differently because I already knew all the DJs. I even, before I got on, I even worked radio with a label and um, I was a bag man. You was the bag man? Yeah. I can't say the label because what I was doing, people might say it was illegal at that time when I was doing that. Right. I didn't know. They was giving me the money. I was going city to city, state to state. Making sure the records got played. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, when, when I when I when I, I couldn't believe it, I'm gonna be honest with you, when they gave the, when this company gave me the opportunity to do this, I didn't know if they were setting me up to I get, I didn't know what it was. I just know they sent me with a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And I went and did what I had to do. And that created uh, a certain confidence in me that I was like, man, I could do anything really. I just need to figure out if I really want to do the music or if I want to be on the behind the scenes side of it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I kind of did both because me and Chino Dollar had Mastermind Music. So we signed me to Mastermind Music. Then we did a furnishing deal by way of Block Entertainment, Bad Boy, Atlantic Records. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I'm familiar with Block Entertainment, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Um, what was like the highest point of going down for you. When did you real when did you realize like, I'm a young job, like, this is crazy. I was in New York. I was in uh LaGuardia Airport. And this older woman, she said, It's my birthday. I'm turning 60. I said, damn, okay. She said, and I know who you are. I said, me? She said, oh, I know who you are. I, oh, I got to get my husband on the phone, honey. He's gonna, he's not going to believe this. And so I'm sitting here like, I want to hear who the hell this woman think I am because she, I know she's not finna say job. Who's she going to say? She going to, you know, I'm just <laughs> right. thinking who she think I am. And her husband came on FaceTime like, yeah, hey, honey. She's like, babe, look who I'm here with. And he said, oh, no shit, you, you're there with? And they said at the same time, young job. And I'm like, what? <laughs> it made my day because I didn't feel like I had, you know, I, I, you know, man, I'm gonna keep it hundred, man. Sometimes we don't know we actually in that moment until you get out of that moment. You know what I'm saying? You don't, you don't know you in one of the greatest positions that's gonna, you know, you know, set the tone, the pace, and the trajectory for your future to come. You don't know that. You know you working towards that. Right. But then one day you look up and you be like, damn, that was a real starting point for me. I didn't know. Hell, I was like, I ain't, I ain't know how, how big it's going down was gonna go. You know, I didn't know. I right. was like, I hope it, I hope it do something. But then it just kept going. I know. <laughs> and then I was like, oh shit, this, oh this real, this real real. Oh, I'm, like, oh I'm on private jet. Oh, oh, I'm mm-hmm. hanging out with the who's. Oh man, they over there in the corner snow. Oh okay. Oh whoa. Everybody, <laughs> <Damn>. everybody. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Yeah. Young job, I got a question for you. How did you come up with the motorcycle dance? Hey, 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 hey. Cause I was going, um, I was going high school to high school with a uh, little bankhead and Greg Street, and you know dancing was popular at that time because the snap movement was really coming in, and uh, we was, they was doing the walk it out. So I knew that that would turn up the kids every time I went to the high school. So when I was performing, it's going down. People liked the song, but I knew I needed some type of dance. And when I was doing this, the walk it out, I didn't feel like that was for me for this song. It just was, I was just doing too much. Right. So then I started pointing to the people, right? And the little cats on the east side took that in. Ah. And, went, and then that. And so Greg Street called me, blocking Chino, was like, man, I gotta come see what these kids doing to your song on, on the east side. I'm like, what they doing? He like, man, you just gotta come. I can't show you, I can't tell you, it's a dance. I'm like, what you mean a dance? He said, bro, this gonna make you a lot of money. We went one night and I'm sitting, I'm anxious, cause I'm like, what is this dance? Please don't let it be nothing lame. Man, when Greg Street said that, sh- that shit came on, I was like, oh, I'm finna get rich. <laughs> it was just like that, it was like, Oh, this real. I'm like, God, this for real. Yo, when I seen that whole club doing it, I was like, boy, we gotta shoot the video today. We shooting that video in about in about three weeks after that. 
you inspire, and I, I'm sure you you may know this, but you never heard me say it. So you were with Block Entertainment. Mm -hmm. I ended up going to, well, by the time I got to Block Entertainment, you were gone. But I, you inspired I that. I never knew that. Yeah, you never knew I was with Block? I never knew that. You lied. I swear, I never so when knew I, that. So when I, when I was with Block, there was Gorilla Zoe, Supplier, okay. Jody Breeze, Jacquees. Yes, yeah, Jacquees. Me yeah. and Jacquees was in the studio trying, we would go to the studio <laughs> at 4 p.m. and trying to get in the studio, yeah. and we might have been there to, for mean, 12 we hours like, I mean, with Tomcat. Yeah, Tomcat. Yeah. Shout out to Tomcat. Yeah, man. That's I saw crazy. so much shit. Bro, I didn't know that. Yes, bro. I, you inspired that. You didn't know that. Okay. But, I, you know, you set the tone for what that company was at that time. Everybody right. knew about Block Entertainment right, because right, of right, what right. you did and a few others. Yeah. What was what was, what was was your time like being at Block Entertainment? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you know what's crazy, man? It's 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 really interesting because block would block would be like on some savage shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I know block. Like he would make sure that things were laid out at home. Like I, the studio, it was it was nice. It was really nice. You know, he was trying to get it up to a certain level of of of, of quality, and it was a great space. You know, uh, but I think, bro. You ever see a person who would like build a whole Lego like structure or a sandcastle, and then when they get it good, they just mess it up? Right. That's what it felt like to me. Mm -hmm. Because he did a great job at putting the team together, but he did a terrible job trying to micromanage people. You know, it's just like if, if I go hire Scotty, because I'm impressed with his aptitude his level of understanding, his knowledge. When I bring you on, when you come in and start, you know, being effective right. and making things happen, I can't just come and be like, no, nah, I don't like that. You move too fast. That shit gonna start triggering people and setting things off. And I think that's just what happened in that time, in my time at Block Entertainment, because we, we got on so fast, you know what I'm saying? It was like, it was fast. You was, was this the same time as Boys in the Hood? Or this was before Boys. This was after Hood? Boys in the Hood. After, you know, right after like that. after they came, that's you know that's kind of how I ended up. You know, like I'm like all right, you know, yeah. Uh, just make making some, me come over here. And fuck maybe with this shit. kinda sorta because I really wanted to, I wanted to rock with. Uh, so I I because I, I originally started out with Chino Nitty doing the beat. Nitty was signed with JD. That's right. So right. JD really would have had Young Jock. But Nitty wanted me to sign to him. Wow. And I just didn't feel, it didn't make sense to me. I was like, nah, I don't want to get further under the pay scale. Right. Why, why, why am I going to go? We, we our own entity. We paid you for the beat. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This ain't no disrespect to nobody because, you know, when people ask questions, I have nah, to nah, drop we, names. Huh? You know? Exactly. But that, that was the whole situation, basically. So it didn't work out with JD. So I was like, man, did he? I want I want to rock with Puff because I knew he had that sauce. He knew what to do, and shit, Block made the shit happen. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was just it just got times it started feeling like dude was a tyrant. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? I, I, we got a special delivery coming. I want to let yeah, you know, man. I, I got a special delivery, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Listen, man. So <laughs> so um I I. I and you know, like, it's no disrespect to Block, because I fuck with Block, but we, you know, we just talking, just understanding situations. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been, I have been around, and I've seen people cry on that, on the, on the, on the bus. Yeah. You know, yeah. niggas who were set up. And I've seen them do some successful ass shit, too. No, likewise. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, like Jacquees is, is, is one of the things that I've personally seen him have a hand in. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah. Let me let me ask you this, man. Growing up as a kid, who was one of the people that inspired you Shit. from the beginning? From the beginning, like somebody like I really like, cause I was rapping at ten. Okay. So, Dana Dane, Slick Rick. Wow. Dana Dane and Slick Rick. Slick Rick was always cool. I never seen Slick Rick get upset. That's why it was rare you ever seen me get upset. 
I was always want to be a cool, cool. You know what I mean? I ain't, I never want to be an issue. I, I'm, I'm, I'm the issue. I don't want to be an issue though. You know what I'm saying? The people. I just want people to understand and respect me. But Dana Diana Slit Rick, and then once I started realizing that Atlanta music has started to develop into something else, you know, I started to hear 3000. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny, you know, I just saw a video the other day where Tip was rapping when he was 14. And he sounded saw just like I MC. Saw that video. I used to sound just like 3000. Wow. And I remember calling So So Deaf when Lil John worked at So So Deaf. And John used to hang on to the phone. <laughs> and I was like, man, I got a rap for you. And he's always kind of said, all right, I know this voice. I done heard this. I done heard this voice a million times. I'm going to let you rap for him. And I go on the rap and I'll make it good. I like, bet, John, here we go. By the time I finished, he said, oh, yeah, 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 you think you Andre 3000. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I, yeah. That, and, that, and that moment let me know that I blew, I blew a shot because I was busy trying to sound like somebody else and not be my authentic self, you know what I'm saying? So from that point on, I was on a journey from then, that moment. Lil John don't know this, but I mean, he know, I told him about the phone call, we talked about it, but he don't know at that moment, I really got on my journey to be authentically who I am. Wow. You know what I'm saying? From that very moment. And it wasn't that long after that, before I realized that, yo, I got my own sound, I got my own motion. I ain't doing what everybody doing. Cause when I came in, Crump was going out. Mm. Snap was in. That's right. And it I just didn't know how to feel it. about I didn't, you know what I'm saying? They was, it was a successful movement. That was another win for the A, but I just, I didn't, you know what I'm saying? I, I didn't feel um, like I was supposed to be doing Snap. Right. I, I loved it, but I didn't, I didn't want to be Snap. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't no thing I'm saying, because we love Snap, you know what I'm saying? Right, it's a good culture. But I was talking about a couple grand and shit like that. I couldn't Snap a couple grand, you know what I'm saying? Right. Price tag on your head, leave you laying where you stand. Nah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. So, in, in, in the household, you grew up mom, dad, brothers, sisters? Yeah, you know, I had a real um, turbulent childhood because <laughs> <clears throat> anywhere I went, I was always able to just kind of just be me and shine. And, you know, sometimes when a new cat come into a new environment, whoever already big dog, they don't like that. Mm -hmm. So every time I went to a new school, somebody wanted to try me. And I was little, I was short. And you know, the people don't, I mean, I ain't tall now, but I was real short, you know what I'm saying? Right. And, 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 and niggas didn't know I could fight until they were like, shit, that nigga ain't scared, he gonna go. So that's why I got suspended like 33 times. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> and, I, and I went to 12 schools, yeah. I went to 12, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you, why. you from the A though? Yeah, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. What part? Shit, <laughs> damn. Uh, Northwest Drive, Bankhead, Bolton Road. Wow. Yeah, now, that, that's my mama that was at, my grandma, you know what I'm saying? How Jet burnt down two years ago, you know what I'm saying? How been, been at the house 50 years, mm. you know what I'm saying? But then my dad lived in College Park. Okay. So that's why when I first came out, you know, niggas were like, damn, bro, how you talking about you from Collin Park, man? You stay, you grew up with me over here too. But then if you go back and listen to the song and it's going down, I said, tell them where you stay. That's where I lived at when I made that song. <laughs> right, right, you right. know what I'm saying? Really but I'm from both, both sides. But anyway, right. uh, I was a trouble child. I ain't gonna lie, I was, I was mischievous. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and blow, you have you had siblings? Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, it's not it's ten of us. I blow ten, some yeah, ten of y'all. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the same same house? I mean, sometimes. Damn. Yeah. That's yeah. a lot, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. You know, it's funny, um, cause when I when I when I see you, you come off like the type of person that you gonna come in the room and you gonna make a nigga fit. You know, and a lot of us like to, like my style is, I want to make you feel it, but I might not be as flashy. You see what I'm saying? I don't be flashy. You don't think you flashy, Jock? No. You flashy. I be chill. No, I ain't flashy. When I say flashy, I mean, what I mean, I mean what, what I, I mean personality-wise. That's a number change. That was dumb, man. No, 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 no. I'm talking about personality-wise. Oh, oh, yeah. 
All you, the splash and I come in the room. Yeah. Okay, that's what I mean. I'm touching shit because I, I feel frequencies. So it ain't even that I'm trying to. It's just I walk, oh shit, this these type of niggas in here. Oh shit, hey. I felt you. I felt you smiling. But, I felt but, that they, shit. but you know what's funny is a lot of people avoid that. That's cool. Because because of the it. hate that comes with it. I can't help it. I can't, I, I, my, that's not my, my purpose is not to avoid hate. My purpose on earth is to be me. God will shield me from the hate. I don't have to avoid it. I can see it. I can see that shit coming. And I'll be, I'm, I, I'm, I, have a, I have a peaceful spirit. Right. When I, when I introduce myself to people, they always be like, oh my God, you so down to earth. And I'm like, I really don't know no other way to be. Because I, I do not really care for arrogant people. I, 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 me personally, I don't. I don't have nothing against you. I just, I don't lock in with it. Right. Because I just, I just believe in too many parables and, and I, you know, and I just seen so much so early on that, like, I can see somebody, how they come off. I can tell you, like, how things gonna go for you. And I ain't no psychic, but I'm telling you, I be reading energy. You could ask my family in the room, they'll tell you. But I be hitting shit on the head. I be like, hey, this gonna go like that and that like that. And then they come out like, bro, how the hell you knew? I said, I could just feel it. I done seen this movie, this role. So many niggas play the same role over and over again. Shit just play out the same way. Man, you know you can't come to Grills by Scotty and not do the grill. Y'all already know what time. I'm thinking we do like a top set, something like that. What you think? Whatever. You or whatever, it don't even matter. Let me ask you a question then, while I'm doing this. Who was the first person you ever saw with a group? Man, I was, I was, man, come on, man. It was, man, we had Eddie Gold, man. The Miami Bowl was coming up here, man. And everybody around, it was so many, I can't, I, I can't even really remember because there was so many people that had gold teeth in Atlanta. You were going to Dr. Jeffrey or you going to Eddie. So you know Dr. Jeffrey. A lot of niggas don't know about Dr. Jeffrey. See, so you went to, you go to Dr. Jeffrey, you really going to a dentist who filing your teeth, shaving, you doing all this extra stuff that's going and when he lock them in now, they locked in though. Right. Some cats when getting, you know, they don't, they don't get all that. And Eddie lock them get you right in for you. Eddie so gone. A lot of people. That's you true, some, uh, Yeah, we do permanent too. You know? Man, we do permanent, man. We do teeth whitening. We do two gems. I try to make this shit. So like, like what a lot of people don't know is, I, cause I know about Eddie. I know about Dr. Jeffrey, all that. Yeah. But when I started doing grills, a lot of the, gr the grill game had slowed down for me. No, I did, yeah. You know, right. and, and so what I tried to do was something different, which is like a boutique style. Most niggas always went to the grill shop and you just got it and you left. When you come to my spot, you get champagne, you hear music, you go relax, play games. So I wanted to elevate the grill. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Hold up. Come on, count. I ain't just yelling, so ha. Oh, man, come on, Jock, man. God, I'm saying, bro, I wasn't ready, bro. Right, it was just, you would talk so smooth, you know, and then they'd be like, ah. <laughs> you so hard. Come on, come on. All right, really. A comedian, too, man. Yeah. Hey, while he getting mold, I'm going to get into my smile back for the day. Did you know that smiling was seen to add value for people? And that people have been more willing to forego a monetary reward in favor for a genuine smile. So the next time you run up on a nigga and you ain't got what it takes, smile, you might get what you need. <laughs> hey, this your boy Scotty ATL. This is your smile fan for the day. Brought to you by Girls by Scotty and Naya, man. I'm gonna get back to my dog, Young Jock. Make some noise for Young Jock, man, please. So, at, at this stage, so when you started out, you had you had a lot of purpose, you had a lot of hustle yeah. in what you was doing. What is it that keeps you going now, hustle wise? Because you ain't stopped, you ain't slowed down. You hustle? still doing what, what keep me going, hustle wise? Hustle. What's like you motivation? You still it's stay motivated. It's fulfilling. I think it's fulfilling to create. I'm a creative, so it's fulfilling me. Fulfilling for me to constantly be in a creative space. And so when you sit back and realize you, you, you primed your whole pathway to be creative and to be paid to be creative. So right. it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like right. shit, like I don't want to just be doing nothing. I get no money. 
So everything I do make me money. So why not keep doing this shit? Like, and, and, and you can't be lazy. I'm not a lazy person. Like my homies will tell you, bro, I will run circles around most niggas. I don't care who you is. I run circles around you. Right. Because I'm, I'm doing so many things and I know I have to do it. I love the lifestyle God has blessed me with. And I have to, in order to maintain it, I got to go out here and hustle. That's right. just it. I got kids, boy. How many kids you got? Any that say you got about, I don't know if it's five kids, six, ten. I got nine I, kids. You got nine kids? Yeah. Yeah. So you, just how you grew up, you got yeah, yeah. kids yeah. like that. <laughs> I'm sitting there sometimes like, man, how the hell did I recreate this shit? Like, man. That's, that's funny. But see, God, we but, see, but, see God, we but, but see, God, God, you know what, man? Let me say this shit. <laughs> God has truly granted me everything I have ever asked for in my life. I, I, I kid you not, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you how, how crazy it is. As a kid, so like my birthday coming up in a few days, right? Right. As a kid, I always wanted a, a surprise party, right? And I would come home and I would get out of the school bus. I'd be like, I don't see no cars. I want to, I want to park the car down the street. You know what I'm saying? Right. I get out, walk in the house. I'd be like, I would open the door. Nobody. I always wanted that, right? I always wanted this rap career. Uh, I always said I wanted twins. I got twins too. Now check this. I got grown. I'm about to shoot some down, but I walk in the house, nigga jump out, surprise! Ah! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So they kept giving me, cause you know you think you're gonna be able to right. know, cause I'm so swift. But I done got surprised like five times. I'm like, I don't want no more surprise parties. Y'all don't get my shot. Right. But right. I always wanted it, right? Right. right. I always wanted wow. twins, right? And I remember sitting at the doctor's office like, he was like, oh, I see something here. It looks like a calcium deposit. I hope it's not a, let me look closer. Rest in peace to that doctor, man. He, he was sitting there looking, I'm looking. He was like, I pray this is not a calcium deposit. I said, excuse me, doc. That looked like a figure eight. He said, it does. It looked like multiples. Yeah, them twins. She was like, <laughs> and I was like, ah, right, right, right. Like, the two for one ski? Like, hold yes, on, sir. God, hold on, right? Yes, sir. So then, when I got the other phone call. You got two twins. She was like, <laughs> we have twins. I'm like, hold on, Jesus. You lie. <laughs> Damn, boy. Ah. Job. How do you spend time with all these kids? I be having to get it in, Scotty. I might bring them to the club. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but I, you know what? You know, we, we try to do things like dinner through the week. You know, if I go to practice games, um, man, come over. Just come to the house. I'm coming to their house. Whatever. Like, I'm, a, I'm we doing event. Like, my kids are adventurous. So I, if I had them at the house, they like suffering. Oh my God, we want to go somewhere. Right. Because I'm naturally that way. And they, I think they got it naturally. They want to go out, they want to see the world. So I just try to do as much as I can to expose them to things. You know, I got two in college right now, you know, and it's amazing to, uh, like yesterday, a phone call. My daughter, she's with um, sports management and she's out on the road in California with her school, Kennesaw State. She's a junior in college, and I'm, and I'm talking to her in, in, in real life. And I'm like, damn, baby, you following your dreams, and you're passionate about it, and you're there where you wanted to be. Then when I hang up the phone with her, my son, her brother is in New York at West Point. You know what I'm saying? Doing his thing in college. Like, and I'm, and I'm looking at my kids. I'm like, y'all got that same capitalist spirit as I have. And, 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 and y'all have watched me do it over and over and over again by chasing dreams, no matter in which direction it was. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just proud again to know that when I wake up every day, God has, I mean, I don't know what else to ask for. I got a grandkid now, you know what I'm saying? Wow. So, you know, what, what, what else could I ask for? Great grands? I don't know, like, I'm, right. He done gave me so much and, I, and, I, and, I, and that's why I be so happy around people because I know when I'm standing around people, they could be smiling, but I know they probably not 
living as good as I am, they may not have had the blessings or the opportunities that I have. So I don't never take people for granted because I don't ever know what the person standing next to me going through. And that's why I'm always, I'm always approachable and I always have a humble spirit because I don't know who gonna be the next. There's some niggas who didn't think you were gonna make it. Now nice. look, now look, they yeah, bro. You know, I've been rocking with you, but you gonna go and give me that. Right, 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 right. I want, right. Right. I want these and these. You're just like, all right, all right. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, nah, so it's, sure. it's the moments, man. It's just, I'm, I'm so grateful, dog. To be sitting here today, you don't even know. They're like, we gonna do all uh, our Sky. Okay. Right. We, I feel like an old nigga when I said it too. Like, I, you, know, you, you tell old people they finna do something, they get excited. I said, like, okay, well, I need to be ready one time. She was like, chill, bro, chill. It's, it's, it's a tape. I'm like, okay. But my level of excitement was my level of excitement when I'm doing anything, like especially when I'm doing concerts, because I love doing that shit. But right. I got excited because I'm proud of you, bro. I'm gonna get your flowers, man. Nah, thank I'm, you. I'm proud of you. Proud of you. Did did you go through a lot of baby mama drama? Man. You know, here's the interesting thing, brother. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm human. And, and and one thing that's guaranteed that will definitely happen with humans is human error. Human nature, it's a real thing. You, you can try to be the best person. You're not, you're not gonna be able to do it all the time. Somewhere we're gonna fall short. And it's times I've fallen short, it's time the mothers have fallen short. And I, you know, and, I, and to this day, I really can't even bash none of them because all of them have done and are doing an exceptional job in co-parenting and raising our kids. They don't have no drama with each other. Here's, here's the thing, it's true, fun fact. I will organize where the mamas get together with all the kids and we go out and have dinner. Wow. And people don't know, they don't. You, you don't have to go walk to the table and be like, oh, okay, this is kids, mamas, and then the kids. Right. And now the wife, you're not gonna know that. Right. Unless you know, you be like, wait a minute, hold on. I know, I know damn well everybody ain't sitting here getting along. But that's the true reality of that. And so when I be seeing what people go through, and sometimes y'all know, y'all see stuff on TV. <laughs> Hey man, you know, it's, 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 it's entertainment for some, it's enlightening for others, it's lessons learned for others as well, but yeah, everybody cool, yeah, I don't have no drama. They call each other, talk on the phone, five way. Wow. Why nah, you got that up? Purposely. Nah, I mean, because man, we gotta be for real, dog. Like this shit ain't about us no more. Our kids, man, that's our future, man. And we got a we we got a responsibility to raise our kids. We ain't got time to be fighting. What the hell are we fighting about? Me and you ain't rocking no more on the sexual side of things. We ain't no intimacy there. It's love. I love you. you know, I'm not in love. You know, it's what it is. I, I can love you. You got my kids. That's what it is. Let's do the best job of raising these kids. All the other shit. That's why you don't see that on love and hip hop. For right. me. Right. You really just think about it. You don't see, I mean, it was a moment where they had some, but the the mothers of my kids never had no issues with each other. You ain't never seen right. that. Right, right, right. a new girlfriend, uh, you think you gonna come in there and just got down. <laughs> that's some different shit. That's, some, that, that's them like, well, we gonna fight about this nigga, you know what, what I'm saying? What's, what's the hardest thing you've been through on reality TV? Um, For real, for real? Yeah. Um, Having to, expose a, 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 a somewhat of a transgression to the world, to my wife. She wasn't my wife at the time. You know, we was going through some crazy shit. I ain't gonna lie, you know, the world didn't, didn't know about it. We didn't make it public. And we was on our outs. And I, you know, I conceived another child with another woman. And having to come back and, 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 and deal with it in reality, in real time. And then the show is like, wait a minute. And once they catch it, we done got past some parts of it, just some parts of it. And then the show come back on, got down. And they rehashed on. They be like, come here, scalp. Ugh. Ah. Ooh, is that another wound? Let me open that one back up. And it just be like, it's like it just happened for the first time. And all the understanding that you thought you may have had in that time of growth and reheal, and you know, healing and just trying to, <laughs> that shit like, scribble, scrabble through that, start over. That shit don't mean, ah. But I thought we said, I don't, I don't even remember saying that. That's how I feel. So that was the hardest thing for me other than that, man. You know, 
I do that shit in my sleep. You know, it's funny that you say that because as, as a people, we watch it and we think it's all reality. We don't think that it's really your life that you're going through. You know, it just seems like they plan that when we see it. Well, I was sure a little bit to get some of this child support back. <laughs> they ain't got shit to do with that. Big facts. Now, I'm gonna just keep it 100. Let's just keep it 100. And this is how I'm gonna break down reality TV for anybody who doubts it, right? You ever just run to the grocery store, right? And you go into the grocery store and you might just throw something on. Ladies, y'all might. My hair, you had a little hair clips in with the little, you might throw the little bad hair they had on, you know? Right. Now, when you get up there and you run into somebody, a celebrity or somebody, you know, you're like, oh, I did not expect to see you. What's happening? Okay, okay, yeah. Tell your mama to my, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to here and get this cabbage because we cooking and we go, okay, girl, good to see you. That's how y'all be, right? Right. But if you know it's going to be 10 cameras there and you walking out that door, you're going to put on your, you know, you're going to try to look better so you, you're you more apt to be on your shit, right? Mm -hmm. If you and I have a conversation with no cameras around, and we boys, right. and we get a little hot and heated, we might say some shit, right? Right. But when them cameras and all these people around filming, that shit might go to another level, my boy. Not trying to, it just might, I might feel like, bro, you trying me in front of the world. Ooh. This ain't even, it's, 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 a, it's a whole audience in here. This right here enough to get your goddamn pop, you know what I'm saying? Right. Also, also embarrassment and shit. But imagine when you know a hundred million people watching. You're like, bro, you really trying me like this? And then because I know you watching, I might feel a little more saucy at the Cause moment. Cause I can't let you have one up on and me either, though. And you know that people watching. So when you when we see stuff, I'm like, man, come on, that can't be real. Cause sometimes people start putting a little bit more sauce on it because they know they under the scrutiny of that lens that goes into the world. The world, watch this shit, they're gonna judge you, but I don't care what you say. You can walk in looking good, check though. It's somebody like, mm, look at this name. He ain't shit. They waiting to get their shot. That's out. how the women be. No, the women be like, they're like, hey, can I get a picture? Thank you. You can walk with him. Mm-hmm. No, he be cheap. <laughs> no, I might not even be doing nothing. Right, but it's just, right. a, you know what I'm saying? Because of what they seen on TV, so yo. Damn, that's crazy. That, now, that's the interesting part of this that I know I know the young job, but I gotta ask you this. Oh, shit. What's, what's the science behind the hairdos? <laughs> you got to tell us what's the science. You done have some weird ass hairdos. <laughs> And I know it's a size behind it. What's well, Scotty? You know, if you walk in certain places, they not just gonna greet you off your hair like this. <laughs> so, I'm saying, no, I'm saying that's that's. But I'm saying it's an expression to our culture. That shit. That what? Hey, my boy, he have it his way, right? That's him. <laughs> right. Okay. But you walk in some places, I'm like, uh, sir. I, they don't know what to say. They don't even know what it means. Is it a sign? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So for me, what I'm saying, Scotty, it was just a, I was trolling, man. Hell, I, I just knew what it was. I do I was to go on uh, hip hop squares. I'm going on here with all these big artists and shit. I ain't had no new music popping or nothing. I was like, you know what? I'm finna shake some shit up. I was like, hey man, give me a swoop de do. <laughs> Uh, food that mother, you know what I mean? And I just remember seeing, <laughs> and I remember not looking in the mirror, and I just smell that hair getting pressed. And I'm like, man, what am I doing? And Polo sitting there like, you just chewing gum, because he's so anxious, like, nigga, do you know what you're doing right now? But I don't see myself until she turned around that mirror. I said, oh, shit. They about to talk about this. Oh, this is gonna go. When I looked around in the salon, <laughs> <laughs> when I first sat in the chair, the women in the salon were like, John, hey, what you doing? I'm gonna get a picture when we finish. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> They're doing all this shit. <laughs> By the time that shit got pressed out, they were like, <laughs> 
They be talking to each other without saying that. You know, how, you know how you look at people be like, yeah. And, yeah. and I was like, oh shit. So when I saw, I said, yeah, I know what's going on in here. <laughs> and so, you know, it was one of them things. I just really was going to do it for the show. But that shit turned me up so hard, man. I, I looked up, I was on the float with Ludacris. McDonald's would give me a check. Ford would give me a check. Um, Miller Coors was giving me a check for the Magic City Classic. And I said to myself, shit. I'm like, how much Luda made for this? When they told me what Luda made for, I said, I made the same thing Luda made today? Oh, yeah. this how? Press on, baby, press on. <laughs> press on. Yeah, I follow you. I follow you, man. Yeah, press on, man. Job, man. <laughs> Shit. If you could go back to your 10 year old self, give yourself some advice, what would you tell that 10 year old job, JC, today? Well, Scotty. You know, just a few minutes ago, I made a statement that I, I'm gonna stand on and I swear by it. When I say God has truly given me everything that I've ever asked for, I may not be able to say that if I went back in my 10 year old self and gave me advice. You see what I'm saying? And, and I just feel like the decisions we make, a lot of the decisions that I have made, a lot of them came from my heart. If you ever, if you ever been around me, people will tell you when I commit to something, I'm in it to win it. And so that's who I've always been. So my 10 year old self couldn't tell me nothing, but do the same shit the same way and go hard or be smarter this time. Uh, but be yourself authentically because that is what's kept me alive. That's what's kept me successful. You know, I, man, I don't, I wouldn't change nothing, Scotty. I mean, it's some things I wouldn't do no more. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a thing that I might not do, but at 10 years old, I might not be able to tell myself, hey, on this day, when you this old, don't go over there, because there's going to be some shit over that way. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know, but I would definitely tell myself, hey, man, keep that same attitude, keep that same energy, and don't ever give up on yourself. That's what I would tell myself. Wow. Yeah. Make some noise for y'all job. What's up? Um... Man, I, again, man, I got to salute you because I feel like, and, and we talked about this a little bit, uh, about this in the back, in the green room, how as, as, as artists, you know, you come so far and then there's a button where you could hit a reset and some niggas keep trying to replay what they created already. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like, you're one of the people that has found a way to recreate yourself, to stay relevant, to not keep trying to be that same person you was, yeah. but you you keep elevating to new heights. You know, with every move you're making, whether it's in the entertainment field, we talk about political things you're doing now, um, TV, radio, you've done so much, man. And I know this is still not just the tip of the iceberg of what you're going to do. Acting, and even more, I'm sure you're going to do. And as a people, man, community, um, we want to salute you, man, and just let you know how much you mean to us for coming out, for standing up, for believing in yourself, and for ins inspiring so many people like these people in the room, man. Thank you for everything you've done, man. For real. Come on, man. Y'all can do better, man. Give me that. Yeah. Hey, listen, man. It's your boy Scott ATL, man. You watch it live on Edgewood TV, man. Make sure you stay tuned in with us every single week. Make sure you follow us on live on Edgewood TV. Shout out to our sponsors, Nyack, Grills by Scotty, Dutch Lee, and shout out to Edgewood Pizza for looking out for the status today. I appreciate y'all. It's going down, man. Scott ATL checking in, checking out.